You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Folks, let's go to the Derek Chauvin trial. Determining George Floyd's cause of death remained the focus today in the trial of the ex-Minneapolis police officer. A forensic pathologist and the chief medical examiner who performed Floyd's autopsy delivered riveting testimonies. This is what they had to say. So, Dr. Baker, take into account the entire exchange you had with Mr. Nelson on Mr. Floyd's uh, medical conditions, on whatever testimony you gave, wherever you gave it, I want to bring our attention back to what's reflected in Exhibit 193. And taking all of that into account, uh, what today remains your opinion as to the cause of death for Mr. Floyd? So my opinion remains unchanged. It's what I put on the death certificate last June. That's cardiopulmonary arrest, complicating law enforcement, subdual restraint, a neck compression. That was my top line then, it would stay my top line now. And so if we look at the other contributing conditions, those other contributing conditions are not conditions that you consider direct causes. Is that true? They are not direct causes of Mr. Floyd's death, that's true. They're contributing causes. And in terms of manner of death, you found then, and do you stand by today, that the manner of death for Mr. Floyd was, as you would call it, homicide? Yes, I would still classify it as a homicide today. Thank you, Dr. Baker. No further questions. So, so Dr. Uh, Baker, uh, we, we did find from the toxicology uh, amounts of fentanyl and methamphetamine in the results from the lab. That is correct. Uh, you didn't mention either fentanyl or meth in Mr. Floyd's system. Um, you mentioned those, but you don't list either, uh, either of them on the top line as causes of death. Uh, why is that? Uh, well, the top line of the cause of death is really what you think is the, the, the most important thing that precipitated the death. Um, other things that you think played a role in the death but were not direct causes get relegated to what's known as the other significant conditions part of the death certificate. So the other significant conditions are things that played a role in the death but didn't directly cause the death. So, for example, you know, Mr. Floyd's use of fentanyl did not cause the subdual or neck restraint. His heart disease did not cause the, um, the subdual or the neck restraint. All right, so, so these are uh, items that may have contributed but weren't the direct cause. Correct. In Mr. Floyd's specific case, the fact that he had been COVID positive seven or eight weeks before he passed away did not factor into my cause of death determination because I didn't see any signs of COVID at his autopsy and his lungs did not have any of the stigmata of COVID that I would expect to see under the microscope. And sure enough, that came back with the exact number that would be consistent with Mr. Floyd having sickle cell trait. So it, it's really just a fluke that it got picked up at autopsy. In my opinion, it doesn't have anything to do with why he died. All right. So if you put all this together, cardiopulmonary arrest, complicating, law enforcement subdual, restraint, and neck compression. What does that mean? Well, what it means to me is that the activities of the law enforcement officers resulted in Mr. Floyd's death, and that specifically those activities were the subdual, the restraint, and the uh, neck compression. And does this then also represent your own conclusion? Yes. Uh, a, a conclusion you have reached and an opinion you hold to a reasonable degree of medical certainty? Yes. Was the methamphetamine uh, significant in your assessment of the cause of death? No. So then based on your uh, view, review of the video and application of your work experience and knowledge, uh, did you rule out uh, drug overdose uh, as a uh, cause of death? Yes. And that's an opinion you hold to a reasonable degree of medical certainty? Yes. So if uh, the manner of death here has been determined to be homicide, uh, does that, in your opinion as a medical examiner, rule out a death by accidental drug overdose? Yes. 
Rob, I've talked about all week, um, really the last couple of weeks, how the prosecutors, how they have uh, moved through this. Uh, they really uh, haven't run away from the issue of drugs and George Floyd and really blunting the efforts of the defense uh, to make that the cause. Uh, it's going to be a little hard to try to, I believe, to convince this jury that that medical examiner is out of his mind when he said, nope, nothing changes my, my opinion. This was homicide. Yeah, I, I would hope so. Uh, I can say 20 years ago, almost to the day from yesterday, uh, Cincinnati, we, we, we had an officer shot, shoot and kill an unarmed African-American man, Timothy Thomas. Uh, then I was a student listening to DMX. Um, I was, I was, uh, I was head of the, st uh, the student chapter of the NAACP. And then I was in actually in the middle of election to become student body president. But obviously the, the, there were, there were, uh, demonstrations and there were some riots and there was just all out, you know, just chaos and and the city of Cincinnati shut down for four days and there was a curfew and all the things you see happening right now before social media has been happening for a very long time. Happened when I was a student, happened before I was a student, and now we are seeing this play out once again. And I will say what the prosecution is hoping is going to work is what worked in the Timothy Thomas's murder trial. It's what worked and uh, Samuel DeBose, when I became chairman of the board, an officer shot someone and killed an unarmed African-American man. And their goal is to, they know it's not reasonable. Their goal is to try to get into the mind of one juror, if they can, and get this to be a hung hung jury to say, uh, and figure out a way to dehumanize him or to say he he's the reason he died. That has worked before. We know it's a playbook that has worked very well. I will say that I the, how the prosecution has uh, litigate the case is some of the best I have seen in any of these cases. They they did what you just said. They definitely addressed the issue, uh, just 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 front of the matter to make sure that they didn't allow that force to be used. Next, they also did a good job of humanizing uh, George Floyd, not as somebody that was a drug addict uh, or somebody that you know was a criminal, but someone that was a human, that was a volunteer. And that happened to, just like we just talked about with DMX, he happened to have an issue with drug addiction, just like many black and a whole lot of white Americans have issues with. And so they, they did a really good job of humanizing him and, 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 not, and, and not allowing the defense to paint this narrative that this the reason why George Floyd is dead is, is because something George Floyd did. No, it's because this officer stood on his neck for nine minutes in the discussion. Uh huh? Well, first and foremost, I, I, I agree with my with my co-panelist. Um, anybody who has eyes um, and has um, watched the video, you will see that um, it was straight up homicide, right? Um, but um, defense, um, they have to play their part, right? Um, you're paid to do a job that is to defend your client to the best of your um to the best of your ability, right? Um, so uh, trying to smear and trying to um, uh, make um, George Floyd uh, to appear appear to be this less than perfect citizen or this person who is the cause of his own death um, is not is nothing new in the playbook. Um, it is something that uh, prosecution defense use all the time when they're trying to win a case. You ruin the uh, credibility. Of, of the person, and, and, and that way it's easier for you to win your case. Uh, but here we must re remember that it is not George Floyd that is on trial. It is not him. Um, he is someone that was murdered. Um, and when I look at this issue from a global perspective, what I can tell you is that uh, the United States, as the leading country when it comes to human rights, cannot continue to police the human rights activities of other nations if we are violating the rights of our own citizens each and every day, especially the rights of our black uh, and brown and poor people in this country. Um, so I know with Secretary Blinken, um, after he was sworn in, he vowed to the international community that he was going to focus on human rights. He was going to ensure that countries do not violate the rights of, of, of others, of, of other citizens. Uh, but we have to start at home. We have to be the role model. We have to show the rest of the world how this is supposed to be done. 
Because the reality is that, Roland, the world is watching this trial. I mean, South Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, they are watching this step by step. And I've been on television all across the continent um, giving my own analysis of, of, of this trial. And they're paying attention. And the outcome of this trial will impact America's standing. Michael Ehontep. Well, Roland, I've been watching every day of uh, the trial. I've been talking about every night on my show. I'm on six nights a week. And there's this been very damaging testimony, especially that's come out today and um, yesterday, Thursday, uh, from the experts, from uh, Dr. Uh, Martin Tobin, from um, the um, heart surgeon, um, uh, Dr. Bill Smock, and then today from the medical examiner, uh, Dr. Andrew Baker, and then also from Dr. Thomas. And what, what the prosecution has been doing is systematically going through step by step by step, based upon facts and evidence with expert witnesses, dismantling and disarming the defense of their argument, whether it's heart disease, whether it's the drugs, whether it's excited delirium. And excited delirium is rooted in racism. On day nine of the of the testimony, Dr. Bill Smock shut down the excited delirium uh, argument as well. OK, so it, it's uh, masterful what's what the prosecution has done. But I caution people, as I've been cautioning my listeners, um, the defense has not presented their case yet. Once the prosecution rests, then the defense will bring forth their witnesses. The defense will bring forth their 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 case. They, they, yes, Eric Nelson has done cross-examination, but the defense has not presented their case yet. So uh, even though this is damaging and hopefully uh, uh, Chauvin is, is found guilty because we all know he's guilty, but as Rob was saying, it's, it's extremely important for people to understand the, the burden of proof is on the prosecution. The prosecution has to prove uh, depending upon which charge that you're trying to get a conviction on or whatever, they have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt to 12 jurors. It has to be unanimous based upon the evidence, yep. not based upon feelings and emotions. If there's one juror who has doubt and, 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 Nelson, and, and Nelson is consistently trying to plant the seeds of doubt in at least one juror, if he can get one juror to say, well, I'm not sure, then you have a mistrial. OK, yep. and it's up to the prosecution to 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 try Chauvin again. So once again, we have to pay attention to this. But uh, lastly, I will say this is a good opportunity for especially African-Americans to study law and to understand these whole legal proceedings and things like this, because unfortunately, the two things we don't understand, one is history, the other is law. Yeah, I will say that one other point on this, when you look at if this case was not an officer, this would be clear as day. Someone sitting on someone's mm -hmm. neck for nine minutes and they died. But the fact that it's so hard for us to convict an officer is the is is the challenge within this within this case because officers are allowed to get away with anything and they're assumed to have the benefit of the doubt. And so, to Michael's point, you have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. It's even a higher standard when it comes to officers. You have to prove beyond any doubt. Like there, that's not even the the, the actual legal standard, but the actual standard and how how it is applied when a police officer kills a black person. It's almost beyond any doubt, not even reasonable doubt. And we have to we have to change that perception. So and the the, the defense knows that. So they're going to go time and time and again just to just figure out, is there any way we can just create a little bit of doubt? Because that's all I need to do. Right. All I need to do is say, well, oh, it was just a little bit of excessive force. He didn't know that was going to happen or or, you know, the officer was just so concerned about the crowd. Somebody might believe that because they're they have some racist mm -hmm. beliefs or they don't know they have racist beliefs and they just they're they're speaking to that one or two person uh, people because i think the majority of the of the jury are going to find guilt in some way but it's going to be very challenging to find a unanimous uh, uh verdict i think this is clear as day i think it should be i think we, we we haven't seen many clearer cases than this but that doesn't mean it's guaranteed uh just given the history of america when it comes to convicting officers right. uh, All right. that, oh. Okay. Go ahead. Final that's comment. That's Final comment. Important. That's why it's important um, to have legislation to address the, the qualified immunity, um, because we know oftentimes officers get to walk away because of this protection, and that is the highest protection that one Absolutely. can have. Um, while I do understand that officers are put in positions where they have to make a 
instant decision as to am I going to die or is someone else going to die, right? And they have to decide quick. And sometimes they're in situations where if they don't act, they will die and other people will also die. But at the very same time, it needs to be done in, in, in a manner where uh, people don't have this implicit bias because the reason why you're easy, it's easier for you to pull that trigger on a black man versus a, a, a white man is because the notion of fear um, is is this person do I find this person threatening to me right and and if the answer is yes because of your implicit biases you are more than likely to pull that trigger or in the case of of George Floyd I'm um, straight up murder the guy right um so so the a qualified immunity needs to be addressed through federal legislation, and two, there needs to be even more work done in the area of implicit biases and so forth. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom, Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially at Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it, please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.